so that's just a, a quick context and um, what we would um, and you can see that that the the from the data through to the experience is is what we're going to chat about and think about in terms of what could you take and make digital learning to support you in solving more complex problems in creating business improvements and looking at innovation and um what we'd like to do is we'd like to engage with you around this and i'm going to hand over to liesel because <clears throat> we've got a quick uh, exercise what we would like you to do is think of three words up to three words which will describe uh, your knowledge or a value that you think you could offer your um, customer or your stakeholders as an example i think a value i can potentially offer um, um, the people we work with is project management. So that would be a word I would enter. Let's have a, a look to see where, where, where's everyone, um, where's the unique value value proposition. So, so we have there um, customer experience. So obviously someone who really understands how to engage with the customer and that would be something unique. We have someone who's, who's there's quite a, you'll see if a word comes up bigger, um, it is coming up more than once, and that's creative. So obviously in some area or, or some discipline, they're able to do things creatively or see things from a different perspective. Um, we also have design thinking. So um, the ability to be able to take design thinking and applying it to business models, um, that's, that's very useful. So there's a, there's a lot of different um, and diverse um, talents and skills. There's innovation. Um, and that definitely speaks back to in your particular area of discipline. So if you are in financial services, uh, maybe you understand a different way of how to, to leverage certain um, investments. Um, and that would be your unique IP that you want to bring to the market. Deirdre, <clears throat> there's, a, yes. there's a question from Benjamin. Um, he's mm. asking, is this a technical skill or a characteristic? Maybe we can just be a little bit clearer on the kind of words we're looking for. Great. So, so, so Craig, it's both technical. So it's what, what area do you operate in? So for us, we operate in learning. Um, our, our specialist is learning with gamification, which makes it something niche. So it could be both a technical, but it also could be an attribute that you give to that. So I see a couple of people put in creativity. So maybe that creativity is you consult um, to, to clients in, um, in uh, manufacturing and maybe you able to see improvements or different ways of doing things. So I think that's just giving, giving a bit more context to what that unique um, knowledge that you are providing the market with. Um, and there's someone putting in product experience so obviously in being able to, to share how to, I mean, product, if it's in a particular area, or maybe it is um, how to use a certain product or certain software. There's um, someone who's also put in um, conceptualizing. Um, so that's obviously taking concepts and making, turning them into ideas. Um, so maybe even in the chat box, you want to put down some of the, the, the disciplines or the areas that you um, operate in would also be interesting. There's someone in governance, so definitely. I mean, governance, governance is becoming more and more prevalent and complex. And that's really, I mean, from the little bit of engagement we've had, we've seen that this is, there's this, the legislation, but it's how do you apply it and how do you solve complex problems? Um, we're getting a couple more coming in. Uh, stakeholder relations. Uh, so that would obviously be dealing with certain stakeholders, managing stakeholders. That could even be in terms of your your PR, um, how you communicate. I'm going through to see what else. Business development, definitely. So that is um, exploring, finding new markets. How do you, um, that would be very interesting because there'd be quite a bit of um, experience and wisdom in that because it is more of a disruptive skill. I think okay, so I think this good. is, yeah. um, mm, I think these are, these are, there's some great um, uh, insights coming through. And I think we just wanted you to think about what is that knowledge that you want to want to capture 
And I'm going to go back into, um, we'll continue adding to that. We can give you um, a, a word cloud later on just to share with, with you what the group um, came up with. Awesome. Great. So we've just gone through that. And now that we, we've got an understanding of, um, or, or we've thought about what is our, our unique IP knowledge expertise that we bring, um, I wanted to put it in terms of what, what areas of your business and what content can you look at and, and what knowledge can you look at and what can you create digital learning from? And um, from and this is just my view, there, there are two areas in terms of where creating digital learning can add value. So in the first area, I've put marketing and branding. So if you are that governance specialist, um, what knowledge, know-how do you have um, that you can share um, in, in, in the form of learning um, to create trust and credibility? Um, it is also very useful if you, if you look back into that knowledge framework is that often you will be operating at the, the experience and the wisdom level, but you might want to also share some of your know-how. And as we know, that's, that's freely available, but it creates credibility with future prospects, future stakeholders. And that's where you want to teach certain things. It also helps um, your, your um, stakeholders understand how you solve problems, how you add value. So I think one of the things is, is as we move into increasingly complex markets, um, we don't know everything about anything. So as an example, um, if I was going out there and I recently to buy a car, I would go and learn certain things about um, how much torque do I need, how many kilowatts before I make that decision. And um, if I see it um, on a certain site, it gives me credibility in terms of what that particular vehicle could do, which could help my buying decision. So I think it's thinking about what can you share and what can you educate to build trust, credibility, and also assist your um, stakeholders um, form a relationship with them. So there's another very interesting concept that we see quite often is, I don't know if anyone is a foodie out here, um, but if you go onto YouTube, there's many recipes where they show you how to do certain things and they use their products in that. And that by creating that, that know-how and giving people tips firstly, um, it creates brand, um, brand, brand awareness. And it also makes people top of mind and they've been given something valuable. So, so, and there's, there's a very interesting um, book called um, Oversubscribed by Jason Priestley. And, and they've actually done stats where, particularly with the digital marketing space, and what they said, when you're educating someone, um, there's a 20, for every 24 people you educate, there's one person likely to become a customer of yours. While when you're just giving out um, awareness and marketing, it, it's, it's almost 100 to 1. So you can see that education brings a different level of engagement. And I've just put some examples there. I think you could even brainstorm what you could put out there. So that's the first, the first area. Um, and then the second area is very much where you're currently working with stakeholders and you're engaging with them. And this is where learning, taking your knowledge and creating learning can be used either to support a product or service. Um, and we see this very often where we, we purchase software. Um, you know, I'm sure some people have bought CRMs. Um, they've even, I mean, as an example here, Zoom, they don't send a consultant to teach you how to do it. It would be time consuming and you couldn't do it for millions of people. They create videos, they create webinars, they create different ways so that you get better usage out of their product. Um, so that's one way of doing it. Also, if you are working in a very specialized area um, and you're having to solve um, customer problems, uh, you want them to understand your methodologies and some basics so that you can work better together. So I know um, in our business, um, we have a certain process we use and we actually 
give our clients just an overview of how you work, how we can work with you better. And that's in, in learning. Um, so we, we, te- we learn our, our, our um, clients how to work better and how it can be a more frictionlessly seamless experience. So there might be process and, t- and tools that you want to um, give to your customers um, and to your stakeholders. Um, and then another way is that um, you may want to use it to, to supplement face-to-face high-touch engagements. So where your time is very valuable and where you want to do the real thinking work, um, but you may want to take certain aspects of your knowledge and actually make that into a course or, or something else that can give you a new to revenue. And um, that's also another way of looking at it. Um, and then also um, what I also looked at is also educating people in terms of other ways and how your services, your product, your knowledge can actually improve their business. Um, So that would be sharing know-how and that can also drive repeat business. So, you know, those are just examples um, in those two areas and they're they're certainly not definitive and I'm sure there's different ways you can put these models, Um, but it's just thinking about how you can create digital learning to both support and make your business more scalable. And I think from this conversation, um, we're going to do another quick exercise. And that exercise is for you to start thinking about where in your offering and your service in your value chain, can you take your knowledge and your your IP and your know-how? And um, we'd like you to take the top three. So I am going to um, hand this over. We're doing another mentee. um, activity. So um, bring out your menti uh, browser screens if it's on your phone or on your PC. Um, and um, we want you to actually rate your top three. I see we have quite a few results coming in. So there's, there's quite a bit of building trust and credibility. Um, we also have uh, building brand awareness, um, spotlighting a service, a um, little bit less on the supporting low touch service or product. So, so sitting more around the marketing area of building trust and credibility. I see we also um, in, in third place, we have creating um, simple know-how and techniques. Also great way, especially in the pre-sales process of, of getting people to understand what you do and create some affinity. Um, so we've got a couple more being added. I'm gonna let let let's see how that. Perhaps you can talk a bit more on this kind of building trust and credibility when it comes to digital learning and the engagement. Is it because learning is is kind of seen as this connection between two people? You're expending your knowledge, and it's a kind of gift. Um, could we extrapolate a bit more on that, perhaps? Mm. So I think you know. I mean, something I want to say, Simon, is that. Um, is that there's uh, customers, stakeholders have so many options. I mean, you go onto um, the the um, you go online and you can search for anything. Um, if we look even five years ago, it wasn't the the proliferation of what's available. Yeah. So you really have to add value right up front. Um, with your customers and create not just um, a once off, it's creating a journey and and education is a great way of adding value to people's lives and and that reciprocity (laughs) is created through the education and I think that's why in the the oversubscribed what they're saying is rather look at educating people, giving them value, which will actually help you um, have more build client relationships and your your sales. And I think this also ties into, um, if we look, there's also a little bit of an overlap between learning and your content management. So, so anyone who's, who's looking at putting content out for their business, um, it, it makes sense to, to, to create more short learning snippets. Um, which will get some attention. I think what's what's key is you don't make it long. People's time is valuable. So you make it quick, effective, something really um, that adds value. And through that, um, you get higher engagement. I think Deirdre, yeah, Deirdre. So um, I'm just watching time as well. But, you know, other areas, please, uh, these are just examples um, of areas where you can boost your digital learning business. So please continue posting in the chat. 
Um, I've added a couple there myself. So yeah, um, cool. This is excellent. So one of the things I also noticed is with, with digital or with learning in itself, the value isn't necessarily the same for each person. You know, what you get out of the learning experience could be very different. So with normal, like if you give someone a gift, for example, there's kind of a price tag to it and you can assign them monetary value. But when you give someone the gift of knowledge, how they use that knowledge could be tenfold and thus the value increases tenfold as well. Great. Great. So, so I'm sure this is um, uh, triggered in terms of um, ideas of, of where you could uh, build, um, take your IP and start looking at what content to, to use.